Hey, all super excited about my conversation here with uh, Kevin O'Brien. Kevin, congratulations on your film. Uh, it oh, is thank you. Super great. It's the film is called At the End of the Day, and uh, today's February 26th, and uh, it released today on iTunes and Netflix and places. Or not yes. Netflix, no, iTunes and... Not Netflix, no, no. Not Hopefully yet. eventually. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's the end, that's the end goal, for sure. Well, well, Kevin, I'll tell you what, uh, I, I, I have the privilege of people asking me to watch their films, uh, which is just the greatest honor. You know, it's fantastic. Anytime <laughs> somebody asks you to, and a lot of them have been, you know, they've been, uh, you know, pretty good. Your film is great. It's, uh, oh, the thanks. quality is fantastic. The storyline is riveting. Uh, I, as I mentioned to you just before we started here, uh, I got a late start on watching it today and I'm halfway through when we had to start the, our, our interview and I hardly wanted to turn it off. I was, uh, I, I was hooked. Um, so congratulations. <laughs> Uh, on the film. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you're, you're going to love when the aliens come in. Uh, it's going to, it's going to blow your mind. Uh, but no, I, <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. That's, that means so much. Thank you. So, so the film's called at the end of the day and uh, g give a little synopsis. It, it's a curious, the, the write-up is curious. It's, it says that it's a, a college professor that ends up in a, um, uh, a Christian a college, Christian professor who ends up in a gay support group, uh, and, and that's sort of what the, what the, what the synopsis is. Is, is that right? Um, yeah. 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 He's, uh, he's kind of planted, um, planted there. There's a lot of stuff he doesn't quite know about it uh, before he, he goes in. And um, it's definitely like a, a fish out of water sort of experience mm -hmm. for him. Um, but yeah, the, the, the premise is that this guy has had, had a specific uh, idea of what, um, you know, of what the LGBTQ community is and, uh, and this, this situation through his, uh, through his school that he works at, uh, kind of puts him into relationships with this community, uh, and helps him, helps him see things a little bit, uh, wider of a spectrum. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's such a great premise that there, uh, it sort of, uh, I don't want to it's ruin tricky. the film film for people. Yeah, it's tricky. Uh, a, a, a person <laughs> who's going through his own, uh, turns out he has his own complicated uh, life going on. Yeah. Uh, 32 years old. I think the, the synopsis might say that he is. He um, ends up uh, having to sort of talk to high school students uh, at a Christian school about his views on, on homosexuality, which are really quite uh, conservative fundamentalist almost. Um, and, and sort of traditional in that Christian way. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, you write this script where through a, a, a series of circumstances, which could have been rather cheesy, right? Like that there's a gay support group. It doesn't come across that way at all. Uh, great character development, really, really uh, uh, well done. Uh, he ends up in these relationships with these people, and you can sort of watch his, um, his evolution on... Um, his own views about uh, sexuality, homosexuality, human like it it gets broader than just just being about uh, uh, yeah. gay gay support group kind, kinds of issues. What what got you into wanting to do a film about something of the transition of a person in their own in their own thinking and their own views about uh, how they include uh, gay and, and non straight people in their lives? Yeah, well, I had wanted to make a feature for a while. I just didn't feel like I had a, a, a conflict or a story strong, you know, big enough that, that warranted a, mm -hmm. an hour and a half, two hours mm -hmm. of screen time. Uh, and so this, this specific, I landed on the, the conflict and the tension way before I had, you know, months before I had the specific story of, oh. and I had the character of Dave and all that. So I, I landed on the, the evangelical church, LGBTQ uh, tension first and that was that was out of my own personal um you know reevaluation of faith and reexamining what i believe and um and and i remember the the moment actually that i that i realized this is what i wanted to do it on and what you know what tension i wanted to do it in was uh i had i had been for a year or two uh with my wife kind of reexamining asking questions uh, but not really heavy on um and then we watched a documentary uh, for the Bible tells me so, yeah. um, and that just those those stories and that mm. the situations that these families are put in just broke me. I think just broke my heart in a way I hadn't hadn't been you know hadn't been done before. Mm. Um, what's interesting is that I I uh, my day job is Journey Box Media. We create short films for pastors and churches, and most mm. of most of those are are toward the uh, conservative. Uh, 
side of things. So, so when I told my wife that night that I know our first movie is going to be about this topic, yeah, uh, she was like, "Okay, let's take this slow. <laughs> let's uh, <laughs> let's really see, you know, what what happens. Let's take this slow and make sure it's the right thing." And um, the few times that I did try to set it down and do another story or find something else, it just kept pulling me back. Um, yeah. So those, those, um, those relationships all came out of, you know, those characters are all heavily inspired by real friendships, real characters, real people that I know and have met over the years, people who have gone to schools like, uh, like the, um, Lakeside Christian college there in the, yeah. in the film. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, that, that's where I, I knew that there could be some, you know, there's been tons of doc, there's been documentaries really, sure really powerful documentaries, really powerful um, full on drama pieces in this topic. And it's a very serious topic, but I, I felt like um, my, that I, that this specific tone, this hadn't, this angle hadn't been done yeah. yet in film. And well, I, and I, I'll tell you what, you, you did a great job with not taking the, with um, delving into these issues and not taking the cheap shots that are so easy or sort of the easy laughs or the simple um, kind of caricatures like um, it, it feels to me like it makes you know it makes the conservative Christian argument for sure uh, uh, that he's he owns that uh, that that argument in the film as a character, uh, the main actor. Uh, but there's no sort of um, there's not even a lot of condemnation uh, really on the on that view, right? Like, and I found that to be uh, really really generous in spirit that. Um, uh, it, it, the the view as as I have seen it so far in the film. I mean, a little so bit so far, so far. <laughs> oh, does it does it fall apart after forty five minutes? I mean, forty seven. No, 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 it doesn't fall apart. Okay. It doesn't fall apart. But uh, well, it's yeah. at, the, at least the first the first uh, forty five minutes. Uh, you know, there's yeah. there's one character. He's the I don't know the dean of the school or the principal yeah. of the school or something. He's got his own little thing going on. Um, yeah. But it 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 allows the argument uh, that he's that this teacher this this guy is making to the students to sort of be um, the way I've heard that argument made by an awful lot of people. Like yeah. I'll tell you, if I think one of the great uh, rhetorical uh, necessities is any time that if you're disagreeing with someone that they would uh, feel that you have made their point and understood the point they're trying to make as well as they would, or maybe even better, right? Where they could say like, yeah, that's, that's how I would say it. I've, you've really understood me uh, here on this. And I feel like that was, uh, that happened in this film. Like there's, um, it's not, it's, uh, it allows the arguments that are made by conservative Christians around uh, non-inclusive, non-inclusivity of uh, gay, lesbian, transgender people in our society it makes the argument. Uh, it seems like the, the way that they make it. Um, and uh, if anything, there's a little bit of sort of caricaturing of sort of what a gay support group would be like. Right. Like uh, at the at the beginning until it hits this level um, where you um, the, the character goes to a. Uh, I know what you call it in our little pre-interview, but uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, a place called the Zebra Zebra House, Zebra Coalition. Yeah, it's a LGBT youth shelter. Yeah, like a shelter for kids that are have been moved out of their house or kicked out of their house or something. Uh, and there's one of those places here in the Twin Cities. I know it well. It's called the Bridge uh, in Minneapolis and St. Paul. And um, were the the cutaway interviews that are in the film, you know, the character meeting these people, were those uh, kids that were actually at the shelter? Yeah, um, that was uh, that was that was uh, from the beginning. I knew I wanted it to be that. So that yeah, that's the real story. Those are um, you know in the script. I had a few. I had some lines written up to kind of fill in the space, so you know the cast and crew could know what we were going for there. Um, but we we I formed a partnership with Zebra Coalition early on, and that that actual me being aware of them and the work that they do really kind of mm. steered the story a little bit. Um, and I was thrilled uh when we were when they allowed us to come film there for one day a couple of the scenes happened there and then uh yeah four of the youth that they serve uh were gracious enough to to tell us their stories mm. and yeah we had no idea what they were going to say when we sat down and started yeah. interviewing them. we had no idea how it would fit into uh, a narrative about you know religious rejection if there would be any sort of religion involved in their yeah. stories uh and as soon as they started talking i was just 
uh, right, blown right. away. And, uh, we, you know, we, that was, that was definitely the most powerful day of filming. Yeah. It's uh that that's just after that's right about the point that I had to stop the film. So you okay. can see yeah. why I feel like I'm right on the edge of my seat on this thing. Right. <laughs> uh, it was, it was just really well done. So I, I feel like the, the film, if someone's concerned or wondering about, cause you know what? Filmmakers always have a you know, you've got a thing you're saying, you have a point of yeah, view yeah. that you're, you say something. that you're coming up. Um, that that um, people can sometimes feel like films that are made in the Christian spaces that want to say that conservative Christians shouldn't treat gay people the way they do. There's a number of films like that. They um, sometimes can feel a little uh, heavy handed uh, to, to the person who still holds those views. Right. Yeah, Someone yeah, still still feels that they, they can often feel like they're not treated fairly. I'm not one of those people, so I don't know. Maybe someone who holds <laughs> holds those views would feel that they're they're not treated fairly in this film. Um, but it's uh, it's it's a smart movie. So um, and and there's a lot going on. Uh, you're dealing with sexuality. Like, I don't, I, I don't have to uh, uh, say much about this just to, to make the point. You say a lot about sexuality of older people. Mm -hmm. And of people who are newly married and of teenagers and like you, you're kind of widening the gamut of the fact that human beings have a hard time in our society dealing with uh, sex uh, at all. But especially outside of just the the husband, wife making babies, you know, conscription. Um, was that yeah. on purpose too? the thing with the aunt and the boyfriend and the wife? Yeah, absolutely. The... Um, I mean, she was actually, uh, on Patty, she's, uh, heavily inspired by my, uh, late mother-in-law, um, really? who was uh, also named Patty and, uh, just as fantastic as, as aunt Patty was. Um, so she's, she's kind of like, I, I wrote her as, uh, what I imagined uh, my mother-in-law would, would be like mm. if she had, you know, mm. gotten to, gotten to her seventies. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like there's just so much, I mean, I, I came from an evangelical, you know, home. I came from, you know, I grew up in the purity movement culture. So, um, there's just so much, um, mm -hmm. taboo and shame built around any sort of yeah. conversation about sexuality. Um, so much so that like, you know, straight people, when they straight people get married and then on their wedding night, like don't know what to do or like, you know, so, um, it's it's uh yeah it's definitely something that I wanted to, um, just let let people. I feel like my the past ten years of my life have just been, um, in this curiosity of what what other life mm. experiences have there been who how have other people lived, mm. uh, and and realizing that those life experiences are just as valid as uh and probably more valid than the one that I have. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just wanted to challenge people to open up a little bit, talk about uh talk about some stuff that that whole thing a lot of their situations are actually kind of based on uh my uh a lot of their interactions are based on real world situations and conversations and so you you know what i'm talking about yeah, but yeah, yeah that, well i want to ask you then after this where don't ruin the film yeah, yeah. for people but one of those scenes yeah. that was so uh, um pretty yeah they, they are uh they were certainly the the most fun characters uh mm -hmm. one of the funnest characters to write yeah. um and people connect with aunt patty for sure How's the film being received? Uh, well, so far, uh, I mean, it came out today and mm -hmm. I don't have any numbers yet. <laughs> it's, it takes a while to get numbers, uh, which is weird in a digital world when right. it's all digital, but <laughs> whatever. Um, so, uh, but as far as last year, we went to seven film festivals um, and uh, we won four awards. Two of those awards uh, were uh, audience choice awards, which I think are like the most important important ones you know connecting with the people that are watching it um and of the two the two lgbt film festivals that we played at mm -hmm. uh, one of it, it won the audience choice award the tampa gay and lesbian film festival and then we we're the first runner-up for the audience choice award at uh out on film the atlanta lgbt film festival so um it's that that to me is what <laughs> what matters is that uh my my friends in the lgbtq community are feeling heard. They're feeling represented. Um, I've heard several times from students who go from LGBTQ uh, students at conservative Christian schools that oh. they say, thank you for telling my story. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that, that is being received really well. Um, so far, the people that have seen it though, are the ones going to film festivals to see this movie and they know what it is. You know, it's a, yeah, right. a public thing. So 
I'm really interested to see what kind of responses we get um, uh-huh. now that it's on iTunes and anyone can see it uh, in their own home. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to. Well, I was I was bragging on, on you know that I think you 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 found the right balance uh, okay. representing the conservative Christian view uh, as as in the film. Um, were you nervous at all about wondering if you were uh, portraying the gay experience or the non straight experience in the in a way that was going to be um, that was going to feel honoring? Did, did, did you feel oh, comfortable absolutely. with that? Did you have a consultant? Did you have other people on the on the in the crew or on the cast that that uh, were, were non straight? Or how did you how did you manage that? Well, I had I, I don't even know how many consultants <laughs> I could have. When, once I landed on this, that was my first my my number one concern was mm-hmm. making sure um, those experiences are are feeling authentic. And so um, I went on what my wife calls the coffee and listening tour. So mm-hmm. I you know I took so many people out to coffee and just asked them their experiences. I asked them, you know how how they feel when they're in uh, churches that say they're welcoming and they're not, you know, they, they, it's only to a certain point, how they feel. Uh, several of my friends live the exact experience of uh, being in a Christian school and getting kicked out. So um, talking to them about, about that experience, asking them what it, fe- you know, how they know when people are actually listening to their stories or how they, or if they are just, um, you know, trying to seem like they're, that mm-hmm. they care. So yeah, that that was number one, um, and the uh, shared it with a lot of my friends in the LGBTQ community. As soon they were the first ones I shared the screenplay with originally, before mm-hmm. I sent it anywhere else, just to you know get. Of course, every experience is different, but um, yeah, and and so a big part of it too for me was that um, I think for a long time I felt this pressure and this fear that like this is the like this is. Like it had to incorporate everything, <clears throat> right? You know, like it, like it has to tell all perspectives and all things, and that's impossible to do, specifically in a film. I think yeah. uh, books can do that a little bit better, um, but at at some point, I I came to this um, freedom, I guess I would say, and and realizing that this isn't the story; it's a story. This is one part of a mm-hmm. conversation that's already happening, and. Hopefully uh, it can it can add it can contribute in a helpful way. It can help people who are you know I don't think this movie is for um, people like uh, I don't think this people is for people who are strong you know com- completely convinced of what they believe and who they are on the conservative side. That huh. this I think they will I I'm sus- suspicious that they will roll their eyes at this movie. Okay, or that they, yeah, right. well, that they won't even give it a chance. Um, but I intended this movie and I wrote it for people like me five or six years ago who were starting to question the things I had mm-hmm. been told and mm-hmm. um, see, you know, who are seeing that the lives of their queer friends who sir, who are also Christians, that those that those two aren't those aren't two things that don't go together, that they yeah. that they are, you know, bearing the fruit of a, of a Christ like life. Um, and so that that's, I think my my specific audience and on that side and then of course you know i just want to give a giant hug to the community to the lgbtq community and say uh, a big apology you know we've a lot of us have done terrible things and said terrible things and been ignorant for a long time Mm -hmm. i I want to ask you here in a minute about uh, the process of making the film because that's super interesting to me and it's kind of nerdy and so you know all that all that sort of film film stuff um, but but I just want to circle back to you. You'd said that the work that you do for your day job is making films for churches and church use. Are you nervous at all that this uh, film is going to give you a reputation as not being someone who is um, safe enough in the um, conservative church world for people to trust your, your your other work? Like, are you are you do you feel you're risking something here? Um, I'm actually this this is. Uh in an honesty thing, I'm, I, I'm not risking as much as I should be. Oh. Um, when I started making the movie out of fear for that, I started a new company. So it's not my, you know, I, sure. this film is produced under a company called Fractal Features. My other company that does the, the short videos is called Journey Box Media. So mm-hmm. um, wow. when I started, I was less, I think, confident in who I was and how bold these things need to be said you know, how important it is to, to speak publicly about these things. 
um, beginning and, you know, had to try to connect all sorts of, uh, try to keep things separate. Um, but now I'm not, I, I want that to be out, you know, I don't want, oh, yeah. I don't want to be hiding behind, uh, this, this part of me is concerned. Like that's, that's, that's as fake as I can possibly get. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, well, my wife is a big fan of the notion of fractals. So, uh, nice. she yeah. will, she will like the name. Yeah, of My wife came up with that. She one, did. Two, actually. She so, did. My wife fun. first ran across it when she, uh, uh, read a book called the shack a long time ago. I don't know if you know the book, The Shack, but there's a whole yep, bit in there yep. about fractals. Yep. And she's yep. like, that's, uh, I think I'm pretty sure that's where she pulled it. From. Is that right? Well, how do you like yep. that? Um, yep. oh, and then right. of course, uh, frozen fractals all around. Oh, in that there's a I, song that they use for, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell my children are now old enough where I am, <laughs> old, uh, yeah, I am yeah. no longer burdened by, uh, by Disney films. You're free. Um, you are free. Hey, okay. So, so the filmmaking process, uh, you, you said earlier in the conversation, uh, well, I knew when I did a feature, uh, that's, that's like filmmaker talk, right? That you have in your, in your, in your brain, you have in your, in your, uh, pedigree, your future pedigree, I'm going to make a feature film. Yeah. Uh, to most people, the idea of making a feature film is, uh, is something they've never even, you know, uh, considered. Uh, going to a feature film seems like a big deal for some people, right? If they can get out for a couple of hours and go to a film. Yeah. Uh, uh, when you said, I now want to launch into a feature, uh, uh, how did the actual experience now of having finished it relate to what you thought you were getting into when you started that into, into the making of the, uh, you know, saying we're, we're now going to do a, what is it? 90 minutes or 87 minutes or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well this one, uh, I mean, yeah, usually 90 minutes, 80 minutes is yeah. what classifies as a feature. Yeah. Um, our movie is a, an hour and 40, okay. hundred it's 108 minutes. 108 minutes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I had no clue what I was getting myself into. Really? Uh, I, like, I did you go... work on other features? Did you know how to storyboard? No, I didn't work. Did no, nope. I mean, it? all the, all the film that I'd done was my own small, either one man crew or having three or four crew members. I didn't go to film school. I'm all self taught. So, uh, I start, you know, I started doing film production cause I was a creative director at a church. Hmm. Yeah. And, uh, we wanted to do original content and I would write them and that's how I discovered hmm. Holy cow! I love this thing called filmmaking. I love moving people uh, and telling stories that move people. So, um, yeah, I mean, I I knew I knew the technicalities of how to make a film. You know, I've done 120 or so short films uh, over the past eight or eight or nine years. Right. Um, but the 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 whole thing of writing a you know 112 page screenplay every single step of the way was. Uh, terrifying and i had so much to learn and i read tried to read as many books as i can and none of the books the the things that the books told me worked so i had to find my own way wow. um did, so all of it so yeah how what when did that start i i'm sure there's multiple points at which you could say that the film uh, at the end of the day uh, had its origin but uh when you feel like now we're we're making this film what when did that start for you uh, it's if it came out february 26th today 2019 uh, how long have you been at this? Well, it's interesting that uh, I actually just wrote a, a Facebook post about this on Sunday during the Oscars because uh, it was during the Oscars in 2014 okay. uh, that I I decided I was watching the Oscars with my wife and I said, screw this. I'm making a movie like I'm going to I'm going to do I'm going to take one small step every day toward making a movie a feature uh, like at this point you were a saying feature, a feature film, a feature yeah, yeah, film. Yeah, not yeah, a documentary and, and, not a short not a right. Yeah, I'm not a documentary. I, I really enjoy documentaries, uh, but they actually scare me to make. Like documentary mm. filmmakers are amazing people. They don't know what they're making until they're making it. <laughs> That's, oh. uh, they they often find the story, almost always find the story as they're doing it. That's just, I like to know what people are going to say. I like getting a take two. Okay. <laughs> and a take three. Yeah. Um, so, so I knew it was going to be a new narrative. I mean, that's, that's what I love to make. Um, so yeah, I I made a decision. I'm going to do this, and I bought a domain called FirstFeature.co, and I wrote a blog post saying I'm doing this. I'm watching the Oscars. I'm going to make a movie. Wow. Um, the I think my first step the next day, my first small step was deleting Candy Crush from my phone. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I considered that my first step. Um, 
And then it was uh, probably four, four or five months later. It was just every day writing mm-hmm. down ideas, you know, learning and reading on, on the story and feature films and uh, formatting a screenplay. But also, um, yeah, on, on trying to find the right story, finding, finding what it was. So it was, it was just always documenting my ideas, any thought, any random thought I had and trying to play with mm-hmm. those a little bit. Uh, and then it was probably four or five months later. It was in June uh, of that summer mm-hmm. when I, um, we, we, you, you've already gotten to this part, but I, I came up with the, I had already laid on the conflict again, but when I, I came up with the name, this is the gay the Lord has made. And that, that was like the initial uh, title of the movie. This oh. is the gay the Lord has made. And that's what, when I, I feel like when I had that, I knew it wouldn't be the end result of the, t- you know, it yeah. wouldn't be the final title, but that was like the spark of inspiration that I needed to say, like, I think that's, that's the tone of this movie. Huh. That's what this movie is and um, helped me write it. So, yeah. So, I mean, it's the thing I was writing on Sunday was, it was five years and two days. Yeah. You're right on it. Five yeah. years. Uh, and I saw somebody's post on Facebook about the film uh, that they said that they were uh, one of the people that were, that contributed to a crowdsourcing. Uh, yeah. funding of it is that the primary way you put the funding together to do the film uh it's about uh the crowdfunding was about a third of it so or I, I guess maybe even yeah probably about a third um so we actually did three crowdfunding campaigns for this movie uh i never want to do another one again did you do but any car first, washes the, <laughs> no, I, know I'm I, wish, I wish i had that i uh, i wish uh yeah but someone would probably would have sabotaged it <laughs> um, I don't know. So, uh, yeah, so the about a third of it we did. Our first one failed. We did a Kickstarter and yeah. then reached too high and didn't have a big enough outreach. Um, yeah. and that failed. And then we came back and did a, sh- a shorter, uh, goal right away to kind of recoup some of that money. And then we, uh, after production, and then we, then we had a bunch of like some sizable donations, oh. uh, that kind of got from, us enough, from right? individuals, from foundations, from individuals families here in Lakeland. Yeah. 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 From, uh, uh, anonymous donors who are their their families lean on the conservative side. So that was an interesting dynamic. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, so we had enough to with those two things to actually sh- to film the movie to produce the film. And then we real we said we would raise the money for post afterwards. Uh, so we did a third crowded funding campaign right after we wrapped production, uh, and the rest of the, um post-production which cost about as much actually a little bit more than the actual production did put out of our pocket so and and how much is that how much does it cost to to make a film of this quality and caliber say it's like it's less than 250 like you don't know or you're not supposed to say no no no. i know i know but that's the thing you don't talk about yeah that's fair that's a fair answer international sales i have like international sales agents trying to like sell a movie to other territories really information out it kind of hurts you a little bit oh so really I can tell you off air like oh i love this entry <laughs> but it's, it's I love not this it's not as much as i mean i could tell you like our well yeah I no i don't know no don't don't yeah you don't have to okay, I, okay. I love it that it's but shrouded it's in secrecy that's even that makes the it's film not, even more uh <laughs> even more lucrative. it's not much it's not it was a i mean it's definitely can, a micro budget film wow well it it, it doesn't have that feel uh, it's, Thanks. uh, it's shot. Well, the lighting is good that, you know, there's plenty of camera. I, I don't know. It feels to me as somebody who is, uh, yeah, I'm not a film critic or anything. So maybe people who, who know <laughs> film or uh, who could tell what kind of camera you were using or, you know, who totally knew what nobody can of, tell nobody could people. Yeah. What it's... sort of shots you were <laughs> sort of shots you were, uh, I mean, were, were having to take. Can, yeah. Um, it, it feels, uh, it feels legitimate. Uh, the, the actors are good too. I mean, they're, they're really solid sometimes on these, you know, a friend putting a film together. Um, uh, you know, you have to, you have to go with what you've got, uh, with your actors, yeah. right? Um, uh, where did these people come from? How did you get such a, uh, such a, a likable and, um, uh, you know, uh, quality cast. They uh, almost all of them are from Central Florida, um, out of Tampa or Orlando. We had a you know a typical casting process where we'd put up breakdowns on uh, websites that actors look at, and then we'd have them record um, tape tape an audition. So they record themselves doing a a specific scene, and then we kind of whittle it down and do in person auditions. Hmm. Um, and what's interesting is that we because the funding didn't come as we thought it would, we actually held auditions a whole year before we filmed it, before we actually produced it. 
Uh, and so I had to email him back the year later saying, hey, remember this uh, movie that we auditioned for? <laughs> we're, we're actually going to do it now. And uh, congratulations, you have the role. Um, but some of the some of the most important characters, Stephen uh, Shane Martin, who played Dave, and then uh, Susan Mulholland, who played Aunt Patty, I didn't find them until like a month before we started filming, a month and a mm. half before we started filming. Um, they were, you know, through through multiple different ways. Some of it was through people that we were asking, do you know anyone who could, who could do this and would be good? Steven found it through a Facebook post in a, you know, Facebook wow. actors. Um, actually his girlfriend found it for him and said, you should, you should try this out. And yeah, we were um, on set. I mean, we were, we were thrilled, blown away by, um, by the talent that we were able to work with at our, you know, definitely at our budget level. Um, and most of them, most of the, you know, the, the supporting cast, the strong supporting cast are working actors. And they're, they're trying to make it in their career. You know, they're, yeah, trying, yeah, to, they're trying to make, make it like you're trying to make it that. right. Everybody's in on trying it. to make it. So yeah, it's this thing of like, we were all really want to do this. A lot of them are, uh, you know, are in the LGBTQ community. Um, Emily, who plays Erica, who's a transgender character. Mm-hmm. She's my transgender friend. So she's a great, she's great uh, character in, in the film. Yeah. 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 So, um, I was thrilled that she was, that she was able to do it. Um, yeah, so it was a, it was a mixture and, um, that's the, yeah, we get compliments on that a lot. That it, Yeah, it's great. So, uh, you, you were the writer, you were the director, yeah. you were the producer listed down there's the producer. with my wife, with your Teresa, wife. I saw that a yeah, co-producer, yeah. co-producer. Yes. yes. Uh, yeah, I, you got me thinking of Bradley Cooper who, uh, you know, then also starred in a star is born. I would yeah, that uh, is to really, sure. to really ratchet right. it up. Did you, um, he had, a, he had a few more dollars than I did. And he's Bradley Cooper, uh, Bradley which apparently Cooper. just gets to do uh, whatever he wants because he's good whatever at all. He he's good at all the things, and he sang. Uh, you know, and and my crush on him continues to grow. Uh, that was like that. They should have just ended the Oscars after that. That was like the whole night. That was just done. I like, thought they all. should have just changed it to the Gaga and the Coopers, and that's what you want. You either want a Gaga or you want a Cooper, and that was that's there the it thing. Is. Um, uh, did you think about cameoing? I, I haven't, again, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm only 48 and a half minutes in, uh, <laughs> do you, uh, do you do, uh, who, who's the, who's the act, who's the, the, the filmmaker that, uh, uh puts himself in films? Uh, M. Night Shyamalan. M. Night Shyamalan. Did, yeah. He's did you M. Night I, yourself I in the film. Most of his early stuff. Uh, no, I am not that person. I, I would be like you weren't you know, driving a car in the car wash would, or any of I that. I would look you, like Sasquatch going across. I know what? I can't be normal in front of a camera. <laughs> So no, there yeah. was that. That is not for me. Um, no, my wife. My wife is driving though in the car wash. My wife. That's my. Oh, wife. is that is that so? Okay, that's so fun. yeah. So the that producer. was a lot of fun. That night was an incredibly fun night to shoot. Yeah. Um, do you? Uh, um, what 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 are the kind of hopes you you have for a film like this? Like like someone who's uh, and I know you know you've been five years into this at some level. You've you've probably had uh, many uh, you know nights of waking up with all kinds of thoughts and worry and anxiety running through you. And, and uh, you know, then it gets well received at film festivals and now it's out in this, in this next public sphere. Uh, what's your, uh, what are the things running through your head on, you know, on February 26, 2019, your, your uh, release date that is now here. What, what do you hope happens? Well, my, I mean, my hope is certainly that it adds to uh, and furthers a conversation. Um, some of my favorite screenings haven't actually been at festivals have been at uh, we've had a, had a few screenings at universities. Oh. Um, the latest one we did was at Valencia college over in Orlando where they had a, a peace and justice week and they brought us in as a, our, our film kind of closed out the night of the week. Um, and just an amazing conversation afterwards of students telling their experiences and their stories of growing up in a mm. Christian home and, um, talking about religion and how, how our theology impacts other people's lives. So, I mean, that's, that, those are the conversations I certainly want to have. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we have a, a partnership through a company called Tug, T-U-G-G, where, uh, people, churches or universities or whatever can set up screenings, um, in their home, either in a movie theater or in a, in a, you know, church or facility or, campus or whatever um and so that's that's my certainly my hope for it um 
And then I also have, you know, I hope that that it's just one of those movies that people, um, you know, I've had some several people, uh, a a gentleman who's a youth pastor, I think a volunteer youth pastor in a in a very uh, conservative area in the in the Bible belts who he is a closeted gay man and his church just handed him this document saying this is what it was a, you know, a list of beliefs, including marriages between one man and one woman and yeah. gender is biological, all of those things. Um, and he's been following our movie for, you know, several years uh-huh. and finally uh, today was able to see it. Wow. Um, so he, he is, you know, he feels seen by seeing this movie. He feels represented uh, and he has something, I don't know how it's going to turn out, but he apparently is going to have his whole youth group over this weekend to watch this movie um, so that he, he can, you know, try, try to have this conversation with them, I guess, before he gets fired. I don't know. I don't see yeah. that <laughs> that going well yeah. uh, for him that way. But um, yeah, I mean, to, to have, um, to make something that can, that can have that kind of impact on someone is, is incredible. Um, you know, and then of course, practically I'd love for it to, just to be able to make our money back, that would be that would be a win for sure. <laughs> and and in the, in the industry now, when you release a film uh, straight to digital, is, am I saying this language right? So straight as yeah, opposed yeah, to nice. going to a film, yeah, uh, straight to digital. Um, how how does a film become successful like this? Like, is it is it over time? Is it you want to get it on more platforms? Should people? Is there anything people can do to be helpful with that? Like, what is the process of success for a straight to digital film? Uh, I mean, it's all about word of mouth and talking about it, people finding a movie and saying, you got to see this movie, um, sharing it, you know? So, I mean, ways people can find, can help is either sharing it. Um, reviews are huge on both Amazon uh, and iTunes. Uh, I'm sure, you know, as podcaster and all that, like, you know, r- reviews help a lot. Um, well, I don't know because nobody ever reviews my podcast, but I could, Im- I could imagine that if anybody cared, that's how the thing works. Yeah, if people did um, such a thing that that would really be quite helpful, but <laughs> I get the point. So, yeah. So that's, um, that's, um, that's one way for sure, uh, for it to go. And just as, as the audience builds, there's this, there's this weird thing that like fa- like Facebook likes, is important to uh, the number of Facebook likes and engagement that you have is important to hmm. distribution companies. So um, we, we ultimately decided to here and domestically in the States to self distribute it, to put it on iTunes ourselves. Oh. Um, we felt like we had uh, that we would be able to find our audience a lot more specifically and quicker. And will uh, that stay that way or is it, or is it the you. kind of thing that when you get some momentum built, then you, then you bring in another distribution company. Is that how it, is that how it works? Yeah, what, I mean, what I'm hoping for is once we get some momentum and then trying to, the next step would be trying to sell it to like a cable company like uh, HBO oh. or Showtime or, you know, any any sort of company that's on cable. And then eventually uh, would be some sort of like subscription streaming service like Netflix or Hulu or something. But usually those are, at, once it's on one of those platforms, then no one, then you can't really make any more money from it um, because every, anyone can see it for free. So. I see. So uh, I mean, I'm, I'm an author, uh, you know, a book author and uh, you know, you got about a three month window for that book to, to make it right. Like that's, yeah. that's just honestly, that's sort of how it goes. Um, and albums kind of have a short sort of uh, shelf life too. Right. When they, how about a film like that? Do you need all this to happen in the next six weeks, in the next six months? Uh, how, how long is the runway that you have for, enough interest in it for someone to pick it up before it just becomes, you know, a film of that sort of past its prime. Well, I feel like first I should say, uh, as I said before, this is my first time. So any answer I give yeah, yeah. is based on what I, th- what I think. Um, so I, I mean, I know there's story after story of films who start off really slow and then find their audience much later. Oh, um, so I, I don't and know. Much later means a year. Two year, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Even even five to ten years. I mean, the way that wow. though you never, wow. you know, you can't predict how how things are going to move. Who's you know what kind of person? <laughs> what what you know? All it takes is one one specific influencer to say like, hey, people, check this out. If they find it and they see it, and then it things explode. So you never know. But de- I mean, always the earlier the better. Yeah, for sure. I see. Uh, that's 
always that's always helpful. But if people are gonna, if they want to support the film, they they want to have some interest in it, they should watch it sooner rather than later. I would imagine, right? Yes. Like yeah, start, yeah, they start... should watch it this. They should buy it or rent it this week for sure. <laughs> yeah, on like iTunes. yeah, okay, on it's iTunes, and and that helps. Yeah. Is that better than on Google Play or Prime, uh, Amazon Prime, or anything? Like, is that is there one you prefer people to go to? Um, I'm. Based on, again, my limited knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, iTunes has the most potential mm -hmm. for income for for audience reach. I, I mean, I know Amazon is giant as well, um, but I know I think the percentages are actually better financially percentages are better on iTunes. It's like okay. a 70 thing instead of uh, on Amazon. I think it's a 50 50. Um, so, yeah. So and I and I just and I know. um pretty sure like industry pays attention a little bit more to iTunes. Okay. So I think, I feel like iTunes get being successful or, or getting onto some sort of like new and noteworthy list of iTunes is almost like the new theatrical, you know, like oh. for a long time, filmmakers would not, it was, it was, they'd want to get on theatrical just to say that that was success yeah. as a, from a filmmaker as I'm, I'm in a movie theater. Um, and now dig digital things have changed so much. Netflix and Hulu and um, Amazon, the, mm -hmm. the way the, the content they're making that just goes straight to, you know, streaming is is so good that 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 qualifier is kind of gone by the wayside now. But but getting on some sort of like recognizable list, I think, is kind of the new thing. Well, the film is called At the End of the Day, a little tagline, love and then crossed out of the words, the sinner hate the sin. Clever. Um and it's, uh, as we say now, today, February 26, 2019, available now, uh, Amazon, but iTunes, if uh, you really want to be, yeah. I guess. If, if but anyway, I mean, if, if you're, you know, you know, there's a lot of people that have told me, you know, I'm not an Apple person. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Guess, get it wherever yeah. you can, get it wherever you can. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to be picky on this one, right? <laughs> I'm not yeah, going to be yeah. picky. Yeah. yeah. And tell your friends and we about will it. Have it. We'll have it on DVD and Blu-ray uh, in a couple of weeks. We actually got the shipment in. We're trying to get it. We're trying to get it worked out on Amazon. It's a setting up a account to sell actual DVDs. It hasn't get special approval, which is kind of weird. So we're working that out. Does that so approval it'll... come from like 1998? Uh, what? Does that approval come from 1998 when people <laughs> wanted a so. DVD to put into a machine that they had connected? Somebody this gave us a DVD hilarious. the other day. No, I didn't hilarious. know what to do with it. I'm like, I don't even, I can't even put it in my computer. I, I just don't have a thing. I, I don't know. I don't understand, but that's the most requested thing. When is it coming? Not even in Blu-ray. When is it coming on DVD? And I'm like, I don't want you to watch it on DVD. <laughs> like, like, it looks so much better. Please watch it on Blu-ray. Yeah, I don't want uh, you. To, yeah, the film maker. I don't want you to watch you. it on DVD. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's funny. That's the, that's the most Well, I'm fun. glad it's going to be out on DVD. In fact, I think one of the posts I saw about it, someone had taken a picture of their, of their did, uh, did the crowdsourcing? That was a Blu-ray. That was a Blu-ray oh, DVD. Blu okay, yeah, yeah. 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 And, yeah. There, and it was Yeah, there. so we did I, for... I think, um, at a certain level of our Kickstarter backers uh, included a DVD Blu-ray combo uh, thing. So we shipped those out last week. Right. Well, Kevin O'Brien, congratulations. You're a, you're a filmmaker and, uh, and it's a great film too. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah. Appreciate really great. It. Thanks for having me on.